Hello, I'm Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. It's that time. It's time to build the ultimate PC for editing audio and video in 2020. Let's get to it. Here is all the kit, including the motherboard that finally arrived. I'm gonna take you through everything I've got here beside me and tell you why I've selected everything. And we're gonna be looking at audio and video editing in particular with one caveat. If you watch my series back in 2018, around two years ago, I built the ultimate audio PC. Well, this takes it a step further. That PC is now being used to edit Premiere Pro videos and do our weekly live stream. But this PC is gonna be my main workstation. You'll see behind me, I got a new Dell 27 inch 4K display that replaces my iMac 5K Retina display. So now it's time to get serious as I'll be working with this PC on a day-to-day -day basis. With that in mind, let's look at every component I've chosen and why I've chosen those components. Let's start with the brains of it all. Yes, the CPU. This is the AMD Ryzen 9 3950 X. It's the very latest CPU from AMD at the time of making this video. And I could have gone for Threadripper with many, many cores, but this one seemed the best bang for buck, value for money for me. And also when I looked at the benchmarks, this one performed really well and just maybe a smidge above the Intel competitor. So AMD is what I've used before. I'm definitely very open to trying out Intel. I've used Intel, of course, with my iMacs in the past, but this one seemed like the best solution for me. Now, of course, to use something like that, you're going to need a really good motherboard, which is why I've chosen the Gigabyte X570. This is the extreme edition of their flagship motherboards. This one is totally 100% compatible with the AMD Ryzen 9 CPU, and it's an insane motherboard. Totally overkill and totally crazy. Uh, it's got slots for pretty much everything you can imagine, including 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet if you need it. One thing and one reason I really chose this, which is when we'll get onto storage in just a moment, is that it has three slots for NVMe drives. These are the fastest drives you can get right now, faster than SSD and a ton faster than, of course, traditional spinning hard disks. So I wanted to do that. And in order to get this working, I picked up a bunch of NVMe drives from Sabrent. Here they are. I've got two of the two terabyte flavors in my hand. I'm also gonna be installing a 500 gigabyte version for the operating system. These two terabyte drives will be used as scratch disks for Adobe Premiere Pro and also as temporary disks for Adobe Audition. It significantly improves the performance if you're using separate drives for your editing as a primary temp and a secondary temp. So bear that in mind. This is going to give me buttery smooth scrolling and scrubbing through my timeline inside Adobe Premiere Pro and I cannot wait to use those in my new PC. Of course, working with something like Adobe Premiere Pro just wouldn't work as well if you didn't have a good graphics card. So again, going with the Gigabyte series, I've chosen the GeForce RTX 2070 Super with eight gigabyte of GDDR6. Uh, it's also got three fans on it. It's a pretty insane setup. Now you might say, well, why didn't you go for the very best mic? Why didn't you go for the 2080 Ti? That would be like insane performance, right? Well, when I looked at the benchmarks, it was marginal and this, was around 600 pounds, which is $800. Whereas the full 2080 Ti was 1,500 pounds, which is, well, around $1,800. So you're looking at around a 1,000 pound or $1,200 difference for a marginal extra performance. So this one seemed like the perfect solution for what I'm looking for with Adobe Premiere Pro and maybe the odd game here and there. Of course, you need lots of RAM when you're working with Adobe applications, and this is why I've gone for Corsair RAM. I've always used Corsair RAM, really enjoyed it. In fact, the Vengeance LPX series seems to be really awesome. Gone for 3000 megahertz. Many of you in the comments will say, well, why did you not go for higher? This seemed the best bang for buck at the time that I purchased it. It's DDR4 uh, and they're 32 gigabyte sticks, meaning I'll get 64 gigabytes to start with in my new PC. But of course I can upgrade and eventually get the full 128 if I really want to. So this is fantastic and gonna serve me well in the new PC. 
Of course, you're not going to be able to switch it on without a PSU. Now, PSUs in this global pandemic seem to be really hard to get hold of. I initially wanted to get the EVGA G3, but they were completely out of stock. So I went for the EVGA 850 G5, going to give me plenty of power. Uh, apparently it's gold, which is good. <laughs> so if you like a nicely protected power supply, uh, then this is going to be good. I've always used EVGA PSUs. They've served me well. So excited to get that into my computer. Now, I won't be feeding this from the mains. I actually have a cyber power UPS, which is an uninterrupted power supply. This means if we get a power cut, it will keep the PC running for about 10 minutes when the power cuts out. This is good if I'm working on a critical project, if I'm live streaming, or just simply so I don't lose data or corrupt things when power suddenly trips out. So a really good thing to have as well, if you don't already have it for your high-end PC, is definitely an uninterrupted power supply. Next, we'll move on to something that's going to keep the CPU really cool. And again, it's from Corsair. It's the H115i Pro. It's got RGB, so that's really cool. It's an all-in-one water cooling unit, so you've got two fans. I'll be putting these at the front of my PC case, and you've got a nice glowing multicolor Corsair uh, logo there, which I think will look really awesome. Now, we've already spoken about really fast NVMe drives, but what about high-end storage, like really loads of storage? Six terabytes on a spinning disk. Now, I'm not going to be using this for editing or doing critical projects. Everything I do day-to-day -day will be on the NVMe drives, but I did pick up this Seagate Barracuda Compute six terabyte spinning drive. It's only 5400 RPM, but it's good enough for me, considering I store a lot in the cloud. In fact, my Google Drive is up to three terabytes so immediately, as soon as I switch on the PC and start syncing, I'm going to use half of that hard disk. But everything like my templates, all of my old projects can store on that and be away from my main workspace so I can keep that nice and empty for editing in the future. Thermal paste is always a good thing to have, so I have that ready to build the PC. And of course, fans, fans, more fans. Now, the PC case I'm going to show you in just a moment comes with fans, um, but I tested out fans a while ago on my channel. You can go back and watch that video, by the way. Um, and I found that the fans from Be Quiet and Noctua were the absolute best, particularly if you're looking for a quiet PC that doesn't make a lot of noise. So I've got a couple of Noctua fans and a couple of Silent Wings fans. Probably won't need them all, but just in case I need extra fan action, those are the fans that I've selected. All right, I've got all those fancy parts, but it wouldn't be a PC without a case to build in, right? It'd just be a load of fancy electronic bits on my desk, which wouldn't look very pretty or be very quiet, so I need a case to build in. After watching the Gamer Nexus channel, uh, Gamer Nexus recommended the Fantex P400A. I took a look at the specs, of course it has RGB and a load of other cool features including tempered glass, so immediately I was sold on that. And that is my full PC build. I've got an AMD CPU, I'm using a GeForce RTX 2070 Super for the GPU, I've got loads of storage, in fact more than I know what to do with, an X570 motherboard, I've got the cooling from Core Corsair, Noctua, Be Quiet. I've also got Vengeance RAM from Corsair, and of course the Fantex P400A case to build in. Let me know what you think of this spec. This will be my main PC that you'll see me using in all my tutorials, in Free Jingle Friday, in anything I do. It's going to be on that monitor all the time. So what do you think of the setup? Anything I've missed or anything you would add to this, let me know in the comments down below. <laughs>